Hello everybody, very different video here today. Uh, picking up a car. I have been out of the hot rodding business for 19 years now. I had a black 1986 Olds Cutlass. Got stolen in 04. Anyway, I haven't been in the hot rodding business since, but I'm picking up a 1971 Cutlass Supreme today, so I'll uh, document the journey. So here. here's the car. This is a 1971 Oldsmobile Cutlass. Okay. But this is actually the main reason I bought the car. This stuff looks pretty solid to me. It looks good underneath. It's a purple color. The paint is not perfect. Paint obviously always looks better. Sunroof, you know, it's an aftermarket sunroof. But it's nice, but like I said, not perfect, like you can see there. But anyway, the chrome is in really good condition. I've even bent down and looked at the bumpers under the back. Not bad, huh? Pretty solid car. The interior is brown. Bench seat. Uh, you know, gotta go. And this is all gonna change color, but. If you move this thing, I'll pull it outside and take okay. it. Okay. Get the start. A very nice car. And John, you said this thing's been sitting in here for what? Just driven once a year or so for what? The last two years. Two years? Yeah, but it's been in here. You guys have had it for what? 22 years? 22 years. How many miles around the car? <laughs> He's the one you gotta ask. I, I, I don't drive it. Yeah. I had a 71, I had a 72 Chevelle, that was my car. This was yeah. Chris's car. My and wife got a Sonic because she, she bought it because Mike was only 14 years old. Oh, wow. And it's kind of sharing the space over here with the donkey and the goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go, I'll start it we up. Had 30, we had 32, 33 goats at one time. It has a 350 Olds in it right now. That's going to change as well. So you want to give me a mic, right? Yeah. Give me a little bit of, you said history on the car? <laughs> no. Because you had it since you were what? You 14. 14. 21 wow. years. Uh, wow. She has not seen rain in 21 years. Literally. It was, it didn't have windshield wipers because I didn't put them on there. I noticed that when I was looking at it, the wiper arms. They do now. Yeah, I put it yeah. back on. But yeah. it was a fair weather car. It mm -hmm. was a toy. It was never supposed to be out in the rain. It never yeah. was. Yeah. 21 yeah. years. She was always in a building, always covered. Yep, and, right here, right? and never saw rain. Now this garage, is it heated? Uh, no, but she, she doesn't stay in this during the winter. Oh. In the winter, she stays in the garage up there that is heated. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. That's one thing I can do is get my garage heated yeah. before, before too long. Here, so she, I can work she's on been it. heated. She's been in a heated building all year round for 21 years. Wow. Yeah, that's the thing that really sold me on it when I looked underneath is the floorboards and stuff like that, the condition. Clean, I'll show you guys clean, here shortly. Spotless. Let's go look at the engine. And is this the engine that was in it when you got it? Yes. It's not the original, but it is the one we got when we got it. And the number eight heads on the bottom left of the cylinder head would indicate to me that's like a 74 or later. Something like that, yeah. Yes, it's a mid-70s. Well, like well, the guy originally owned it, he used it as a drag car. It oh, a really? Drag car. Yeah, he used it to Quaker mm. State and stuff like he that. He had, had, had a bigger a... engine in it. He blew up the bigger mm -hmm. engine and he put the 350 in it and he sold it. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And we bought it. So he just bought something out of some 70s Cutlass that he bought fit to get it to something like run. that. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. went and bought a 67 Chevelle. <laughs> but I think he's one of those guys that he doesn't keep him very long because he only yeah. had that one for like five years. Oh, no, no, yeah. no. He still had it when I called him. No, no. He had, just, he had sold So you bought this car. then in 01? 01. 2001? From okay. um, uh, Canfield Swap. And you said as far as the body, as far as you know, one quarter was changed? All or? there where the girl hit him, where the girl hit him at the wheel cover in the, at the edge of the door and back. Okay, yeah. so and passenger quarter panel? Yeah, yep. and it wasn't even, it, Due it, to it, accident. it didn't even go into it. <laughs> and he didn't even have to change, they didn't have to change it because when she did it, it just pushed it in a little bit. It didn't actually take anything off of it. Yeah. So okay. the guy who did the body work for it, the paint job, uh, Joe from Suburban Auto, mm -hmm. he, um, he actually went in and pounded it back out. And oh, made really? It okay. Again. Awesome. Yeah. Now, that's so that way he wouldn't have to get rid that's of the paint. something you might want to know that it's Suburban Auto in Alliance because he has the paint code. Yeah, okay. He has the paint code for this if you awesome. want to keep going. Suburban Auto in Alliance. I don't remember Alliance. that name or not, but okay. it's, on, it's on Union Avenue right downtown Alliance. That's okay. if you want to keep it the same that's color, you can change yeah, it whatever yeah. you want. I hopefully I'm not going to touch anything in the body here for a long time. I always yeah. said that man, next, time I, next time I was going to paint, I was thinking about making like a candy apple blue with like a. With like a silver like silver metal flake or something. I was telling my kids it's like a plum color. Yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, awesome, awesome. 
fun stuff. Time's got a funny way of uh, passing you when you're, you know, you get older. Uh, the same amount of time has passed from uh, 1985 to 2004 as from when I got out of car crafting to now. But uh, here's a couple shots of underneath the car you can see. I mean, it's not perfect, but dang, that's pretty doggone nice if you can see the floors, the frame rails. But let me give you a frame of reference. Here is a, I think it was a 1985 442 I went to look at. They were asking $15,000. At first here in this first two pictures, it doesn't look bad, but then you look close and you see, oh my gosh, you know, they didn't take the quarter panel windows, quarter windows out, they painted over the trim. And you can see something's going on there. I think it's corrosion paint peeling under the bottom of that quarter window uh, you can see here the decal they cleared over the decals I think and it's peeling there's this is the side of the door there's got to be a big patch of Bondo under that and it's cracking and then here's really just the awful part the pinch weld is opened up and rusting you can see a rust hole in the quarter panel and if you were to just take a small screwdriver probably even your keys you could stick it right through that quarter panel so that's a hard pass for me but i was seeing stuff like this for uh, you know 15 grand and you know stuff that was complete junk for six and seven thousand all right guys i don't know how the audio is going to come out on this but uh i guess this is the first time this car's been in rain in 22 years uh it's got i think 256 gears something like that in it uh, i'm doing about i don't know 2400 maybe or 273 gears looks like about it's hard to tell the tack is tiny 2400 rpm here and i'm going about 60. um feels like it needs a uh, you know overdrive another gear the wipers do work man i, I don't want to say this is sketchy but god i can turn see how much i'm turning the steering wheel and the car almost doesn't change directions i don't think the front end parts are bad but uh, you know it's 70 75 you know aspect ratio tires uh, you know, they're 20570 or 20575 14 inch wheels. You know, I'm sure it needs new, uh, you know, suspension arm bushings front and back. Uh, you know, they're probably 52 years old. Uh, you know, there's probably some worn out parts like center link and stuff like that. But, and, and then also the, I bet you a big part of it, probably not the center link and stuff, but uh, tie rods, probably more likely the uh, uh, gearbox, the steering gearbox. This will get a quick ratio um, is probably what it'll get, but so huh, uh, my anxiety level is coming down a little bit. Um, you know, you can see some things like I noticed right away, like the, you know that side, the headliner is coming down, but but uh, the journey has begun. Um, you know, man, I haven't driven an old carbureted car like this in so long. I actually never drove the car before I bought it. I rode in the car uh, with Mike's dad driving, but this is my first time actually driving it. Um, I'm not sure, but this might actually be, as it is right now, one of the slower cars I've driven. It definitely needs a tune-up. Feels like the timing's way off. Uh, the secondaries may not even be opening, assuming it is a four-barrel. Um, and uh, probably needs plugs, uh, but it just... I don't think it's downshifting. I don't think the transmission's kicking down a gear either, so... But the journey is literally and figuratively begun. Good news. Got it home. It's in my garage. Uh, bad news, I didn't film it, um, but we were just driving it, you know, got it home, just literally going to drive it to, you know, the local next town over and come back. Uh, went up a grade and it died. Uh, apparently, when the gas gauge reads a quarter tank, it is bone empty, right? So learn that the hard way. Um, and then I noticed even after it stalled, I could only crank for about five seconds, you know, then the battery died. So I believe it needs a battery as well. Um, so going to get a battery um, and a negative cable. Here at my local O'Reilly's, let's go in and learn something about batteries. To remedy the battery problem, the first thing I need is at least just this thing to drive around as it is so I can enjoy it. That way that gives me time to build another engine over winter and I can enjoy it in the meantime. Uh, put two new cables on it, they were corroded. They, a lot of stuff just wasn't hooked up really correctly. Put a new positive and negative cable on it. Uh, the only downside here was a positive cable is I did not purchase one that was long enough. But uh, even after adding a grounding strap and things like that, um, the battery tested good, uh, but it still was very weak cranking. And I didn't want to mess around with it. So my next is replace the battery and the alternator. That would be 100% for sure. Make this thing really, uh, really roadworthy and durable. As far as batteries go, what I wound up getting is an Everstart. This is their three year, which is their most expensive line of batteries, one year, two year, three years. I got it from Walmart. I used to remember that like Optima batteries were the thing to get back then, spiral cell, but I've had many people tell me they didn't last any longer. They only got three or four or five years out of those. So 
Anyway, i uh, also see the battery cables, replaced both battery cables. Uh, it is grounded to the body up here. I grounded it better. You can see the lug there is grounded to the head. Um, I don't think anything was grounded well in this car. The battery cable I think is routed like I think it's supposed to be. And I got a 72 inch, it's almost double the length of the cable that was on here. Um, so uh, much, much, much better. The other one, if you remember the posts were here, my understanding from talking to the old guys, it's supposed to be here, which makes sense. Getting it farther away from the battery. This is actually, by the way, group size 34, supposed to have a 24. Hard to find a group 24 battery with the posts on this side. This is identical in size. The group size is the case size of the battery. It's identical to a 24, just about an inch shorter, so I'm fine with that. But it fits left to right in the tray, and the battery hold down, you can't really see it, but the battery hold down uh, does grab it there. So that works for me. So battery is in. Uh, new cables run all the way down to the starter. Uh, better ground, and also, I will show you, I was having problem with the turn signals. I couldn't get the turn signals to flash. Uh, the left turn signal wouldn't flash when the headlights were on. It would work when they're not on. Ground strap, that ground strap goes from the back of the passenger side cylinder head to the firewall. And I did where it actually contacts, I did sand to bare metal. Um, and I put some, uh, you know, dielectric grease type stuff on there. So all that stuff fixed the electrical demons. I wanna tell you what my vision is for this car, by the way. I'm gonna cut in a picture here. My vision for this car is a street car. This I learned and I did well on my old 86 Cutlass. Um, I'll show you a few pictures of the 86 Cutlass that I had. I'd like to introduce you guys to my car that got stolen back in August of 2004. This was my ride. It was not perfect, but it was a 1986 Olds Cutlass Supreme. Uh, it had column shift with bucket seats from the factory. It was kind of cool. I bought this car for $1,200, I think in 2001, and it had like 46,000 miles, I think, something like that, with a blown up V6. Uh, that is a, like a ABS plastic cowl induction hood that I grafted onto a, a steel hood. Yeah, it did crack at the corners, uh, but the car looked pretty nice. I put new headlight bezels on it, new grills, new turn signals. I built a 455 engine and it had like a, you know, like a nine and a quarter to one compression engine. You can even see oil cooler lines, so an oil cooler up front. Um, air conditioning didn't work, but you know I never got that far. Had electric fuel pump in the trunk. Uh, I can see the gauges I put under the cowl hood here. Uh, put a gauge package in it. Uh, got an eight and a half inch rear end, uh, 10 bolt rear end out of another 442. Painted it, you can see how nice everything turned out. Here's another engine shot. Uh, this car was great. That was pretty quick for 19 years ago, which it ran, I think it was 1239 best in the quarter mile at 110 miles an hour. This was a nice street car. So what I learned from the 86 Cutlass is uh, that you either want to build a street car or a race car. I think the worst is when you build a race car that you drive on the street. It, race cars make horrible street cars. So what I want from this is a street car. Um, IHRA rules, uh, a drag strip say that if you go any faster than I believe it's 130 miles an hour or 135 in a quarter mile or below 11, uh, below 11 and a half seconds in a quarter mile, you wind up needing a five point roll bar, uh, which I think could be unsafe and or eliminate basically the use of the back seat. I want to be able to take my wife and two kids out in this thing. Um, and, uh, so I'm going to make this a street car, but can you guys see the stance on this thing? Uh, let me turn the camera around. First thing that's got to go are these tires. 205, 75, 14, 14 inch rims. And they're not even the right wheels. I believe these have snap on center caps if you really want to get nerdy. Um, this area should have bolt on, but anyway, um, so they're not correct, so to speak. And they're just tiny. The stance is terrible. Uh, look at the back, how small that is. How far inset how far inset from the, you know, from the wheel well it is. So street rod, a street car. Um, I'm going to put bigger tires. <laughs> There's the new tires that are going on. 275-40-18s. And we get big brakes. I'll do something with the hood. My buddy wants me to put a 442 hood on. I'm leaning towards wanting to weld on a uh, like a two or four inch cowl induction on this, but I have a lot of time to decide that. Um, interior eventually, for now, I may just leave the interior alone and do nothing. Um, I'd like to convert it to like a gray and black, 
but that's kind of the vision is I want to turn it into like a, a street muscle car. Um, I want to put uh, stuff on it, like for example, maybe some aero on the front end, uh, the big wheels and the big tires, the big brakes. Uh, I, want, I want the best of both worlds. I want the woe and I want the go. And I want it to look modern. I want it to have some of the modern amenities, screen with a backup camera, stuff like that. That's where I want to go with this car. Oh, and most importantly, most importantly, um, somewhere along here, it's going to get a new motor. I'm going to do work on that motor just to get it to run well for now. Uh, you can see here, this ridge means this is a big block. This is an Oldsmobile big block. And I don't remember which one this is. I could find out. But if you can look next to the oil filler tube. Here's an example of a car that I really liked. This is a 1974 Camaro. At first glance, the engine looks like a big block, but it's not. It's an LS3 small block with a carburetor on it, so it looks kind of stock, but kind of not. Notice the glass trim is gone, flush-mounted glass, uh, front and rear. That chrome trim is gone. These are uh, TMI seats. These seats are like three grand just for front and rear seats. I looked them up. Uh, phenomenal. Look at that. It's the best of the old world uh, and the new, as well as, of course, uh, to go with the big power is big wheels, big tires, and big brakes. Something like this, but lower dollar, uh, you know, not crazy unaffordable is what I'm after. Oil filler tube right there is the easiest way to spot an Oldsmobile, but if you look at that uh, area above the timing cover, it is flat on this one, no ridge. And if you look at the block I have over here, when you have that ridge, you know it's a big block. The big blocks, the deck height is one and one point something inch further taller deck height. Uh, bigger main bearing bore, main bearing I should say, larger stroke crankshaft. This thing is gonna get a big block holds built over winter. I got the door hinge off, really wobbly. The uh, old bushings, uh, one is so worn it wore through the head. You see it should have a head on it. And I have the door, I rested, this is a toolbox with a two by four to space it up. And then this piece of noodle kind of wrap under this edge. And it was just like maybe a half inch under the door. Rested it on that, had my wife come out and then laid it on top of this uh, padded, um, you know, bench thingy. Uh, and taped up the edge of the door. Now I can tap in. Oops. The new bushing. Uh, they give you oversized ones. The kit, the bushing repair kit. All right, here's the kit. Okay, and it comes with standard bronze and these oversized knurled ones. I don't think I need the oversized knurled ones. I think this should just uh, tap in. I think it'll be okay. Little knurled port, there's a little knurled portion there. You should be able to just tap it home. So as I said about wanting to correct the electrical issues and make this a solid driver, first of all, everything was painted black. Um, I don't know if it's a weak battery or weak battery and alternator both, but I'm not taking my chances. Here's the old alternator. Oh, and by the way, you can see here, I put on a new oil filler cap, just one I had laying around in my junk parts box. Uh, you know, just polished it up. Uh, but anyway, um, so to convert to an internally regulated, the information is widely available. But long story short, this is the external regulator, voltage regulator for use with the 
type of alternator the car came with, which is, which is an externally regulated alternator. So first thing that I did to make it just kind of look stock-ish was I took the brand new external voltage regulator that the old owners put on the car. You can see those four tabs. You got to jump the uh, outer one to the outer one and the inner one to the inner one. So I took a Dremel, I ground off the rivets, I popped the cover off, and then I clipped off the circuit board with a pair of side cuts. And here you can see I made the jumpers. I purposely jumped outside that case because number one, it is gonna you know uh, maintain insulation. It's gonna be fine. It's no more exposed than it was before. And number two, now you can tell that there's nothing uh, you know on the inside. It's more obvious visually if you take it off. Okay, so now that creates the jumper that I need. And you can buy a jumper box that's much smaller than this, but I just liked this method. It was free. Uh, so you see it's plugged into the harness didn't modify the car's harness. Now, here's the new Powermaster alternator I got from Summit. It was like 120 bucks instead of a 55 amp worn out uh, stock externally regulated. This is an internally regulated 110 amp alternator. Now, if you can see the spade connectors are plugged in without a connector housing. Uh, it's basically a three wire setup. You want that so that your you know generator light still works. And here you can see I got the doorman from the help section at O'Reilly's. I used their pigtail. I took the wires out of the pigtail and plugged the old connectors in, the old wires, I should say, from the car's wiring harness into the new connector and plugged it in. Now I took that uh, case for the relay and I painted it with tank tone, trying to make it look kind of plated just because, you know, more black on black. I'm just trying to get away from that. Um, and it's good to go. Charges like a charm, and we've got great cranking ability. Now, it may not be extremely obvious from these pictures. I probably should have gotten some better engine bay close-up pictures, but as I said, everything was painted over with, like, Krylon black. So if you can see the fender wells here, especially bad on the driver's side, have this caked-on, fish-eyed, running black paint all over everything. Uh, so what I first did was I started scraping it with a putty knife scraper and it did come off, start to come off, uh, but it was just a lot of work and that didn't get it all the way off. Uh, so what I wound up doing was I wound up finding a better way to get it off. found a technique to have scraped a lot of the, this paint that's on the inner fenders off. You can see it flaked down there on the ground. You can see that's pretty clean. There is paint. Do you see the color change in this area? This is brake cleaner. kind of douse it. Now if you just watch, wait like five seconds, do you see it bubbling up? And then it wipes off. That's working pretty well. Here's the driver's side. TA sanded down with 800. I did 120 on some of the real rough spots to try to get some scratches out, but that's 800. Then uh, cleaned it off, wiped it off with brake cleaner uh, and some blue paper towels. I know you guys are dying to figure out what am I painting this with? Well, here it is. This is Krylon Fusion All-in-One Paint and Primer, Satin Black. One of the things that uh, life and business, uh, you know, 19 years or so in business uh, for myself has taught me is you need to find mentors and you need to figure out who do you trust that's really good at something because we don't have enough time in our lifetimes to learn everything ourselves. So this is based on my buddy Ken um, and watch the result from using this stuff and there it is dry it's a little bit of dirt in the paint there but for an open garage I think it's as good as it's gonna get and just for reference here is the other side that has just been cleaned um, there's no product on it or anything I may hit this one too or I may wait until I pull it out A few other things, I replaced the coolant cap with one that had not been painted over that, again, I had laying around. Here you can see, I guess some models uh, didn't have a heater control valve. So this motor, you can see there's just a nipple on it and the heater hose goes straight into it. Uh, it was horrible to get it off. It just has a screwdriver slot. It was frozen in there. Uh, the final thing that I wound up doing, you can see on the right side, is I welded a spark plug socket directly to the nipple uh, then put a ratchet on it to get it off it was terrible it took me like four or five hours just to get that and then once i got the heater control valve in which looks very nice now you know because it's a cad plating again trying to get away from black on black on black 
I see that the heater hoses aren't hooked up to the heater core, so I'm pretty sure the heater core was leaking, but we're gonna leave that alone for now and tackle that some other day. What? Are you filming us about our guitars? If I did not give you permission to film me. If you get a good stick it on. A good stick it on. So I probably should have done the time lapse. I apologize, guys. Um, but this is done. Um, if you may or may not be able to see, this surface was probably about three eighths of an inch uh, down below this one. But just replacing the hinges did not fix that. Um, we also wound up removing the inner fender, the plastic inner fender, so that and then the removing the bolts and the dump bolt under the dog leg here of the fender, pulling the fender out to give us access to the hinges. But we adjusted the striker. We spent a couple hours on this, getting this surface even with that. You start, because you can't move the quarter panel, you start at the back with the back of the door. We got that gap good. This is even as well. It's not sticking out. Um, I hurt my thumb. This is my bad thumb. I couldn't open the door before with my, my bad thumb. I'd use my right hand. And if you listen to how that shuts, the striker doesn't drag anymore. So you see this hinge here, that hinge lets you adjust the door front to back. You know, that lets you do this with the door. This hinge here, because it's in this plane, that lets you adjust the top and the bottom of the door in and out. And then we also closed up this gap. We got this surface pretty even with this. We closed up this gap. We actually wound up taking shims out. Uh, we took a shim out from under here. Um, and there was one other shim that we took out. Uh, we worked on the this. Only downside is it made contact. This was already making contact before. If you can see, there's a little bit of paint damage there, but I'll touch that up. But we, even though this is not perfect, it, it's never perfect on these cars. This is pretty doggone good. Had this trim off, put it back on. Um, so we're making some progress. Better. Ugly there, but got the air cleaner on it. Painted those two little bolts, bolt heads. It's coming around, guys. Here we go, cold start and test drive. In short, what happens here is I flood it. Now, I'm not that much of a ding dong. Basically, the air cleaner, there was a small, tiny air cleaner uh, on it when I got it. They also gave me a large 14 inch air cleaner. And when you don't have the air cleaner, the large one on just right, um, it was actually hitting the, uh, the choke and leaving the choke on. So even though I, it has a manual choke, even though I pushed the choke to turn it off, it stayed on and it was uh, forcing the choke door shut, which flooded the engine. At least I know the charging system is up to snuff now in the battery. Uh, before I changed the battery in the alternator, you literally could only crank it for about five to 10 seconds before the battery died. Temp number two.
This is without the vacuum advance hooked up. after driving the car today. I put about 50 miles on it. Uh, this was its first real maiden voyage, I guess, other than just, you know, driving it home. Um, but it was the first chance I got to enjoy it. First, uh, I noticed that I totally see the appeal of driving a big, bulbous, beautiful A-body cutlass in an eye-catching color. Um, I got three compliments today. One of them from a, was from a semi that was passing me by. You know, a trucker was honking at me. Um, the second thing that I realized is this car is lower than it looks. Um, my impression of these cars is that we're always very big, but it's really not. It's actually, compared to my four-door Kia Optima, it's only 13 inches longer and eight inches wider, uh, but it's lower than it looks. I mean, I have to bend down to uh, put gas, you know, the fuel you know, is filler is behind the license plate and I'm bending down to do that. I can rest my arm on the roof of the car. It's a lot lower than it actually, you'd actually think. Uh, number three, it is a dream, just an absolute dream to cruise on the highway. This thing just loves to gobble up highway. Um, and uh, even with all the suspension flaws and, you know, looseness that I'm going to take care of. Um, and uh, number four, the biggest thing that I saw that I, I felt from driving this, I experienced, I should say, is I absolutely, positively love the openness of the pillarless hardtop. This is the first car that I've ever actually driven, not ridden in, but driven, you know, that's a hardtop car where, you know, it does not have a post uh, between the door and the quarter window there like a G-Body does. And you just get this amazing panoramic view and the wind swirling around. It's just a very open feeling. Uh, just an awesome car. So this is just the beginning of the journey here, guys. Um, I am going to post whatever is in my heart. I'm not switching directions per se. I'm not leaving the sartorial and the shoe world, but there's just not that much of that content right now with the way my lifestyle has changed. And there's going to be a lot more of the automotive content, at least for the summer of 2023. Uh, but I will do whatever I think is really going to bring you guys value. And, you know, I know I'm going to lose some viewers because of this. I'm sorry, but, um, you know, I just I just have to follow my heart. I have to document my life. Um, and plus, especially the last uh, about a year and a half or so, the shoe videos really have, you know, fallen off. And some of the videos are only getting 500 views anyway. So, in other words, I think I have a lot to gain and nothing to lose. So, hopefully I don't alienate too many people that are sartorial focused. Hopefully you guys like this stuff too. And I hope I'll see you next time. God bless and take care.